Outgoing President Muhammad Buhari has conferred on President-elect Bolatinubu Niger's highest national honors, the Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, GCFR, while Vice President-elect Kashim Shatima was conferred on the Grand Commander of the Order of Niger, GCON honors. Buhari also handed over transition documents to Tinubu. Arise correspondent Binga Ashiru tells us more. It's always an inspiring and worthy feat when honor is given to whom it's due. More gratifying when it happens to be the highest national honor, the Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic. It's another significant milestone in Nigeria's democratic journey as the investiture provides an opportunity to have a handshake between the incoming and the outgoing administration and the handover of baton on the task hired. I am confident that Nigeria is in capable hands as we embark on this new chapter. I have run a good race. I have finished my course. It is now time for another to take up the button. The mood at the banquet hall has all the trappings of a high profile roll call as members of the Buhari's cabinet, governors, Party leaders were all in attendance, setting an eloquent prelude for the May 29th inauguration. You have done your part, Mr. President. Now, a great duty will descend on me. I understand the meaning of the honor given to me today and the magnitude of the tax that awaits. We are determined as enumerated, we must make headway as if shattered the course. The people deserve no less. You said so. I shall not disappoint you. Immediately, the vice president elect was conferred with the grand commander of the Order of the Niger. The ceremony got on a high note as everyone anxiously watched how the man of the moment, the president elect, would be conferred with the Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, becoming the fifth democratically elected president to be conferred with the highest national honors. For the president, he may have had a good race and in a hurry to pass the baton to his successor. The historic occasion, which provides a sneak preview ahead of the final inauguration of May 29, added another symbolic gesture, which is the handover of the transition documents to the incoming administration to set the tone for the task ahead. Bola Ahmed Tidibu and his team have all the information required to make a quick start with the business of governors. A briefing note on each of the nine priority areas covering all sectors the briefs are intended to provide relevant information that would help the new administration understand the peculiarities of each sector, including key issues within the sector that need immediate attention. What's most symbolic here is the handover of the transition documents and also the exchange of baton to signal uh, an exchange between the incoming administration and the outgoing administration to set the ball rolling for the task ahead. From the State Banquet Hall, Binga Ashiru, Arise News. All right, uh, Dr. Abati, everything is gearing up for inauguration, which we're looking up uh, to. Okay, a number of things. Yesterday, the uh, president-elect and the vice-president-elect were honored with the uh, top most statues in the yeah. country, GCFR, which is the top most, uh, you know, title uh, award for those who have been presidents and, you know, heads of state in Nigeria, and the GCON for the vice-president-elect. There are other persons, of course, who take the GCON. Aleko Dangote, was honored GCON. I think um, uh, Otumba Maika Denuga also bears the GCON title, in addition to vice president. But the GCFR is strictly, uh, you know, reserved for people who are presidents or who have been heads of state. 
And what happened yesterday is in line with the Honors Act of 1963. In other words, it's a tradition, it's a convention. But I think I was saying in another conversation yesterday that look, <laughs> if a man has been given a GCFR and another one has been given GCUN as vice president elect, uh, those honors are never taken away from them. So uh, in a sense, uh, concerned persons may say, okay, now that Tebola Metinubu is GCFR and uh, Kashim Shetima is GCUN, and uh, so what happens to the case in court? So what we're seeing is that there is a momentum that is generating, and that momentum you know, is just rolling uh, forward. After that, yesterday they had the inauguration uh, concert. Today they will have a uh, Jumat service. On Sunday there will be, uh, on Saturday there will be Children's Day. On uh, Sunday uh, there will be, uh, you know, church service. I guess, you know, the two uh, uh, persons, president-elect and vice president-elect, will show up at the, uh, you know, at the church service, interdenominational, you know, uh, service in Abuja as observers, but they will be there because it's part of the, uh, of the program. So there's a momentum that is already rolling ahead. Maybe perhaps there's an argument, you know, being pushed that people can just, okay, continue to push after this process is concluded, which is that, look, it's better perhaps to conclude litigations, election petitions, before anybody is inaugurated. What is uh, the process uh, going on in Abuja? It's also going on at the state level. By Monday, new government will be in place, from federal to state, except in those places where people are just taking second term. But okay, that's something for people to worry about. At the uh, occasion yesterday, President uh, Muhammad Buhari advised uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu to govern, to lead with wisdom, courage, and compassion. And of course, you know, that's important. Whoever is going to lead Nigeria, as uh, President elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu will begin to lead from uh, Monday. We need a lot of wisdom. He will need a lot of courage. He will need a lot of compassion. In the lead up to uh, the elections and all of that, okay, there was a lot of acrimony, there was a lot of crisis, you know, with people like us asking, how would people heal? What would be, you know, the road forward to reconciliation? Mm. Bala Tinubu cannot afford to be a vindictive president. He cannot afford to uh, run a Nigeria where he will talk about, oh, those who voted for me, those who did not vote for me. Mm. He has talked about unity. He has talked about inclusion. He has tried to reach out to a man like Kwan Kwan So. Okay, we would like to see that in practical terms. Mm. And all of that will be in terms of the devil, in the details. That is one. The president says that Nigeria is in safe hands. Well, Bola Ahmed Tinubu and uh, Alaji Kashim Shetima, they will have to prove that. They will have to show that the country is indeed in safe hands. And how will it be in safe hands? Yesterday, one of the issues we considered was security. Section 14, sub, two, uh, sub 2B of the 1999 Constitution. Will he be able to provide security? We talked about education as a priority. We talked about the economy. Many times on this program, hard decisions that would need to be taken. And a government that is compassionate, as uh, President Mohamed Buhari is suggesting. Well, you know, in response, uh, President uh, elect uh, Bola Metinubu said, well, uh, you know, uh, Buhari will still be relevant whether he stays in uh, Daura or he goes to uh, Nije. <laughs> that uh, he will still knock on his door. <laughs> well, that's interesting to hear. You know, after all, uh, President Buhari will still remain a member of the Council of State, and he will get invited to Council of State meetings, and we hope that he would, you know, offer the benefit of his uh, experience. Finally, President Buhari says he has run a good race. Well, yesterday I said, we, we hope that history will be kind to him. Every president leaving office will say, oh, 
you know, I hope history will be kind to him, to him, to me. And in his own particular case, he has said he has apologized to anybody who may feel very bad. But indeed, he has run a good race. When he started this race, he was in hospital for the better part of the time. He started his career as a civilian president with uh, uh, ear uh, treatment in London. He spent uh, some 136 days or so abroad, cumulatively almost a whole year. He ended it with a toothache. But we have seen him looking very healthy, looking very strong. And yesterday, this the newspaper was telling us he's finishing strong. And indeed, in terms of, in terms of his uh, physical agility, you can see that you know, uh, he looks very well. And we're happy for him in that regard, and also happy with his uh, family. But the final judgment in terms of performance is something that is still in the womb of time. It's still something that will be determined by the Nigerian people, by students of history, by observers. Yesterday, we tried to show two sides of the assessment so far, quoting from Punch newspaper, quoting from this day newspaper, but clearly, the true assessment is in the womb of time. Hmm. Time will tell. Dr. Basi, that word you said, the womb of time, is very deep. You see, because... Let me start by opening the womb of time. You know, this same APC government said, President Goodluck Jonathan's government that you served in was worse than anything. But in the womb of time, and the womb of time opened up now, now shows that President Goodluck Jonathan's administration that they said he was worse off is even way better than Muhammad Buhari's administration of eight years. And if you ask me how, Rufai, fact check me empirically. Take the economic growth under President Goodluck Jonathan and President Muhammad Buhari, uncomparable. Take the unemployment rate, uncomparable. Take the debt, uncomparable. The economy, take an analysis. Fact check me. I just pray that in the womb of time, we will not have to say that President Buhari's administration is better than Bola Ahmed Tinubu's administration. And that's why, like I said before, I want Nigeria to be good. I wish Bola Ahmed Tinubu well. If he does well, Nigeria does well. But he must also know that the best gift I can give him is daily criticism here, which is never personal. Because in giving him the criticism, I will also give him the kudos when he does well. Like if you hear the analysis, there's never a day I will come and tell you that I don't give kudos to Buhari. Yes, he did some things in of infrastructure, but they can still be challenged. But I give kudos to him. So that's the best we can do for him. And he must be receptive of criticism and he must not be vindictive. But you see, the problem a lot of people have pointed out is the fact that the handlers of Bola Ahmed Tinubu are still vindictive despite the victory they have. Let me show you how vindictive they are. After the elections that were held, one of his key handlers said 2023 should be the last time Igbos will interfere in Lagos politics. If you are a winner, you don't need all of that. You need to be conciliatory. But somebody that claimed that they have won still went ahead to send out a message like that. And when he was interviewed, there was no clawback. We've also seen the messages some of his handlers have put out. So the problem now a lot of people are seeing is this. There's mixed messaging. On one hand, people are saying, let's unite, let's have peace. But your handlers are still sending sensitive messages like this out. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, what you do, speak so loud, I can't hear what you say. So if we truly want a nation of unity by reaching out to political opponents, you should start by listening to the growls and the pains. And that's why Nigerians are saying the decisions in court matters a great deal. You see, we've had instances like this. But the question is, what did history teach us? When an instance like this happened in 2007, 
Umar Musa Aradua came out to say that the elections that brought me were fraught with irregularities. And he made attempts to make amends, just like the amends you talked about, that there's a clarion call that an electoral case should be decided before we have the president sworn in. It's as simple as that. On his investiture, I congratulate President-elect Bola Tinobu. Just like I will still congratulate him when he's sworn in on May 29, doesn't take anything away from me. As long as he's president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, he's my president. But that does not stop me from criticizing when he goes otherwise, because my criticism is my submission to national development and growth. But the people in his camp should know that in building peace, you must speak peace. Till to date, there's no been an apology to the Igbos after that message was sent out on the 19th of March that this should be the last time Igbo should have any say in Lagos politics. But this is the same state that you have a lot of Igbo businesses. Like I said, I wish the administration well, barring any legal encumbrances and court and all of that. And when the court makes their decision, we still have to come together to move forward. But in moving forward, we should learn to temper the things we say to each other. But time, as they say, is pregnant with a lot of possibilities. European Dairy Cooperative Allah Food has commissioned its first farm out of Northern Europe. The state of the art dairy farm is located in Dama, in Kaduna State, and covers land area of 400 hectares with capacity to house 400 milking cows and other 100, 1,000 animals, I should say. Allah says its dairy farm will boost the capacity of local farmers and bridge the demand for dairy products in the country. A rice correspondent, Nisi Gabriel, has this report. I always say to farmers, if you don't want to drink the water, the cow should not drink the water. It needs to be clean as for humans. Then they drink more, and the more they drink, the more milk they make, because 90% of milk is water. There's a growing demand for affordable nutrition in Nigeria, and Allah is here to close that gap. Allah Farms has set up a modern technology dairy farm in Kaduna State for optimal animal comforts and milk production. We have state-of-the-art technology. We use computers to monitor cows. We have motion detection. Uh, detection. We have cooling systems to cool cows. We have wetting systems to spray them with if they're, co if they're too hot. So we have all kinds of technology that is uh, kind of new here in Nigeria, actually in Africa. The farm currently houses 216 Danish Holstein heifers brought to Nigeria from Denmark to boost local production. This breed of cow has a much higher expected yield per cow compared to the local breeds in the country. It can produce 30 to 40 liters of milk per day. The intention is to get to 5 million liters uh, a week. Um, and the in, we'll be at about half that at the moment because there's 216 heifers here but the intention is to get to 400. Um, clearly you're right on the climate how are they going to cope with the heat which is why we brought in 200 to start off with not 400. Uh, at the moment they seem to be coping actually very well with it. But it was, yeah, you're quite right that it was one of our concerns. Officials say public and private partnership paved the way for Allah Farm to achieve this feat. By joining hands with the Cardinal State Government and all the partners, Allah Farm has focused on establishing milk collecting centers while the state governments will improve on the structural conditions for nomadic farmers. Our hope is that with the successes of a farm like this, the problems of clashes between itinerant herders and sedentary farmers will be reduced to a minimum. We have 14 grazing results in Kaduna State. This is just one of them. Our objective, our long-term plan over the next 10 to 20 years is to ensure that on each of these grazing results there is something like this that settles between 1,000 and 5,000 families. If they're able to settle 50,000 families, that's about half a million families in various grazing results that are taken off, going up and down, with cows that only produce one to two liters of milk. With the Nigeria dairy industry currently able to supply less than 10% of the country's current demand for dairy products, 
other farm aims to bridge that gap. Nisi Gabriel, Arise News.